Auto Newbies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is a truck that I thought I had missed the boat on entirely. It is a 2000 Ford F-150 SVT Lightning, the second generation of the sport truck. The recent generation is electric and totally different, but this is cool. Supercharged V8 under the hood, very cool flare side, lowered looks, a proper sport truck, and they are getting very, very collectible. When they came out new, it was a very hot thing and then got even more hot with the Fast and Furious movie franchise. Then a little dip in values for a lot of years and now recently, well, forget about it. They're either really expensive or they're high mileage junk that you don't want to buy. Thankfully, this one was somewhere in between and it really scratches an itch in sport trucks that you absolutely cannot buy today. Now, the first generation of Ford Lightning certainly looked the part. Very cool with the previous generation F-150. All single color, much like this one, but it really didn't have the performance. It was built as an answer to the 454 SS Chevy pickup truck. Once again, not a lot of performance there, but a big 450. 54, so at least that number was there. Both of them burnout monsters, but not very fast. The 454 was retired, but for whatever reason, the F-150 Lightning came back in a second generation in 1998, looking like this. They started out with 360 horsepower, but by 2000, they bumped that horsepower up by 20 and the torque around 450, making it a proper performer around five seconds, zero to 60. So it was faster than say a Mustang GT or even a Mustang Cobra of its time. And even cars like the BMW M3, so many performance vehicles of this era were smashed by this truck. It was actually the world's fastest production truck for many years until the Viper SRT 10 came out with its V10 under the hood. But perhaps what made these the most iconic is its fast and furious pedigree. Brian O'Connor driving around in an F-150 just like this in this color, ordering the tuna no crust and street racing with Dominic Toretto, the birth of a franchise that has gone completely crazy since when it comes to storylines and what happens and such. But the original movie about street racing and stealing VCRs had this truck in it and it sort of has a cult following along with just about anything else in the movie. The Mark IV Supra, insanely coveted and insanely overvalued. The Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX, there's very few left in nice condition, so those have popped up in value. The Fast and Furious pedigree really hasn't popped these all that much yet because they do bring similar prices to a 454 SS or a Viper SRT10. And honestly, I think this is the best looking one of the bunch. So when a viewer emailed me saying, I would like to sell my Lightning that I've owned for many years, would you be interested in it? I said yes, even though I wasn't looking for one, he priced it reasonably enough that it was the cheapest Lightning in the USA. And today we're gonna find out why, because we'll drive the car up to the car wizards for an inspection. But at first glance, it does look like a very, very nice truck and even underneath from what I can see before it goes up on the lift despite being a Wisconsin a northern car it does look pretty darn nice but before we start the tour and head up to the car wizards I would like to thank car vertical for sponsoring today's video car vertical is a service that provides vehicle history checks in more than 25 countries their data comes from various national registries insurance companies car manufacturers car sale websites crashed car auctions and car maintenance databases and show you all this information in one single report so when I used it to check the history on my Ford Lightning I could see the car had a clean history with no accidents reported and a consistent chain of ownership that shows consistent mileage a good truck. If this truck had a more interesting history, it would show a lot more on Car Vertical, like this Ferrari F430, for example. Car Vertical shows it was in a major accident, and it shows those accident photos when it was at the salvage yard. And also, the odometer was tampered with. So you can use Car Vertical to check on the history of a car that you are potentially purchasing so you don't get stuck with a sketchy car, or use it to see the history on a car that you already have. And Hoovies Garage fans get a special discount by using the promo code Hoovies at checkout. So be sure to check out Car Vertical, link below and use the promo code Hoovies. And now let's start the tour of the F-150 SVT Lightning, the cheapest in the USA. I bought this for $15,000 thanks to a viewer emailing me saying I want to get rid of this Lightning. And 
Of course, I had to jump on it for that price. But I did own one before on the first season of my TV show, Car Issues, and I bought that one with about the same mileage and condition for $9,500. These were a lot cheaper just a few short years ago, and I sold mine pretty quickly because I ended that season with about 25 cars, along with all the cars I already had, and I needed to get rid of a lot of them. So anybody that was interested in anything, I just let them take it. But I definitely regretted the Lightning, especially in hindsight, considering the price is going crazy and how fun they are to drive. But just the look of them is pretty cool in itself. I think it's the best looking of the three sport racy trucks of this era, say the Dakota RT, the Viper SRT10, the Chevy 454 SS. This is the coolest. The step side bed lends itself to this sport truck treatment. They lowered it just right with SVT wheels, added four wheel disc brakes so this thing can actually handle pretty well. And the body kit on it is pretty subtle, but you can tell that they actually tried to make this bumper look a little more aggressive. They gave it side skirts as well, but when you go over to the passenger side, it's probably the coolest part. It has a side exit exhaust right by the step side bed here. And this one, like most of them, has an aftermarket exhaust, which is pretty much essential to do because they were pretty muffled from the factory. Now, unlike a lot of sport trucks, this one could actually haul. It does have a decent bed and a 5,000 pound towing capacity. If you put the tow hitch on it, we have cat food and litter for Neelix right now and a few extra parts since it just showed up. And if you look at it overall, the condition is really nice, but it was a Wisconsin truck and the seller did disclose to me some issues with rust here in the back bumper, but you have to get really low to see it. And this is a bolt on part that can be replaced. When you look underneath, it actually actually looks to be really solid, really nice, but we'll check that more when we get to the car wizards. When you go inside, this thing is in very, very nice shape, way nicer than the truck that I had before, so that is a big plus. They did a kind of suede knockoff here with leather inserts, and they are two sort of buckets, sort of not, because it is a bench over here, but they made it in the shape of a bucket. This folds up, and then you can actually have a middle passenger, and when you look at the front, Front, well, it does look like a plasticky 90s Ford, which it is, but they tried a little bit with the SVT white gauges, and this looks like it's out of a Mustang Cobra, the steering wheel as well. And even though it's a regular cab truck, it does feel roomy and comfortable. I can lean the seat back relatively well. I don't feel claustrophobic in this thing, which is nice because it is a full-size truck. And under the hood is something pretty darn special here. 5.4 liter supercharged V8. You see that big Eaton supercharger on there. And other than different pistons and a little bit of beefing up, this is the stock 5.4 handling all of that power. No problem. 380 horsepower, 450-ish pound-feet of torque. Is the stock iron block and headers you would find on a normal 5.4. This one obviously has an aftermarket intake, which many people did. And you can see under the hood, it is very, very tidy. A great powertrain and an amazing noise you'll hear in a little bit. And this truck joins some pretty special company with this engine, albeit different versions, the 5.4 supercharged in the GT500. And then of course, the radically modified, very different version of this in the Ford GT from 2005 and 2006. And someday I would like to own the trifecta of that, even though the car was there talked me out of the GT500. Someday maybe that car will find its way back to me and there's a steerman doing touch and goes nonstop back there. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about it, uh, but someday I do want to have that trifecta of supercharged 5.4 Fords in the garage. Won't be anytime soon, but this is the cheapest way uh, to start it. And with a little bit of detailing, I feel like this engine bay will be show ready. So very nice there. And the driving experience, even though it has quite a bit of mileage, is pretty impressive as well. One thing though, when you first start it up, the odometer doesn't illuminate. It needs a few minutes before it comes alive, a pretty common Ford issue, but this one, 120 something thousand miles on it. And yeah, we're on the wrong side for the exhaust, but it sounds really, really good. I'll let this thing warm up a little bit more before we really romp on it, but you can see the boost gauge right there. And we'll head up to the car wizards. It is getting a little weird seeing these cars from my youth becoming classic collectibles because when I think of a classic car or truck, I think of my 72 Ford F-250. That is a classic or the 49 Cadillac or the 46 Chrysler Town & Country. Uh, but a 2000 Ford F-150 now is a collector car. 
this era of 90s futuristic -y looking hard plastic interiors is something that is nostalgic now and that's that's just hard to believe and a truck like this is just an experience that you are never going to get anymore new full-size trucks are huge the small ones they don't have v8s they don't make this noise <laughs> oh that 5.4 supercharged v8 it's just perfect no matter what vehicle it's in it just sounds so good this one being side piped it has a little extra goodness and you can certainly hear the supercharger very easily in this truck in the gt500 you can hear it as well but maybe it doesn't sound quite as good as this and of course the ford gt that noise is right behind your head and just incredible intoxicating gotta get me one of those someday but for now well this is a pretty good pacifier i guess until i take a turn which i mean it, it's still a truck but i can get into a turn with relative confidence a few years ago i was at a track day and somebody was actually tracking one of these and having a great time the brakes didn't overheat they didn't have any problems they certainly weren't the fastest a miata was catching up to them in the corners and in the straights well barely pull away but they could do the job I don't think there's anything wrong with this truck and you can see the odometers come alive 126,000 miles so it is very very happy and very very happy to do donuts cars that you can make a bunch of noises and have a lot of fun and not be going at a speed that will send you directly to jail and that's why I love this era of cars and I think the car wizard loves it too he may not be happy though because uh, there won't be much to work on I would guess look at that setup wow but I have been wrong before maybe he'll find something to fix we'll see two of my hoopties are outside it usually means they are done or the wizards full what is going on in here? Whoa. Weezer! I'm trying not to be offended here. Offended by what? Uh, because there's not just one W12 Bentley with a Grimes in it. There's a, there's another one over there, an older one. Well, there's in, one, the one thing that these are not. In it. What? They're not Hoovy Bentleys. Mm -hmm. You turn down mine, but you'll work on others. <laughs> well, mine was like an annoying dash out. Yeah, kinda. yours was a dash out job. And a so. very, very early Bentley with high mileage mm -hmm. uh, of the W12. I know you hate them, but I guess money's money. But not big jobs here? No, nothing here was big. Just some suspension work, some battery work, and valve cover gaskets. Well, why battery work? The batteries were bad. Oh. So you have to replace them by modifying the car? No, I'm making a bracket to adapt a smaller battery. This is easier to get a hold of. Oh, I see. Well, the NSX is sort of a cool blast from the past. Had one of those. And then, speaking of blast from the past, look at the lightning wizard. Lightning. Yeah, you repossessed one of my supercharged 5.4s, so I decided to get another one. Well, not really. We used it to trade bills, which I assume I used them all up with those two outside, the Ferrari and the Buick. Yeah. It's all used up now. You have no more in-store credit. It's all gone. But uh, yeah, a viewer emailed me wanting to sell the Lightning. It was the cheapest in the USA at the price, $15,000. So I bought it, and it looks pretty darn nice, huh? It doesn't look like a hoopty. It doesn't match the modus operandi of Hoovy's garage. No, there's no check engine light. The only problem that I see electrical is the odometer. It takes it a few minutes before it comes alive. So it's blank for a little while, then works again. Probably not worth fixing. It's very common on these. It's probably like a solder joint or something. Okay. Well, under the hood, I was looking at it earlier, and it does look very, very nice. These were slightly different than the GT500s. Not nearly as much horsepower, of course. Right. Uh, different generation of Ford engines. Mm -hmm. uh, you like these okay, right? Yeah, these are all right. They blow out their spark plugs, but other than that, nothing crazy, right? No. Is anything wrong with it, or...? Any issues? I don't see anything. I don't notice anything. It seems to drive smooth and nice and actually really tight for an old Ford. Wow. Yeah. yeah I'm curious if you'll find 
anything at all wrong with it. It looks like it's maybe a couple years old. I know. Take a look underneath. Yeah, let's get it on that four post. Left yeah, I see you're full because my Maserati, unfortunately, the engine still hasn't showed up a month later. Every yeah. excuse in the book they uh -huh. keep making. Uh, but meanwhile, on the Land Rover Evoque, the engine has showed up, but you're not going to have two of my cars completely torn to shreds in here. So, no. About to name and shame this uh, salvage yard that won't ship a Maserati engine, but I'll give them a little bit more time. Well, let's see if I can get some more work for you here on the Lightning. All right. Has an exhaust on it. Well, let's get it up in the air. Well, what happened here? Maybe whoever's putting on that trim, it was a Friday in August of 2000, and he was ready to check out. <laughs> Probably. Normal forward quality quality to job one yeah all right well the biggest concern was buying this thing from wisconsin oh, and wow. what the situation was going to be rust wise he sent me a few photos and it didn't look too bad he did disclose a few spots but uh at least it didn't look too bad to me i guess there's those bumper brackets they always rust that one's black yeah that one's pretty rusted so maybe that one's been replaced at some point on the driver's side yeah I think so. Or maybe it got bopped a little bit. I don't know. I don't see anything leaking. No, it does look really nice. But yeah, the concern was like that uh, Chevy Silverado SS that we had that looked really nice from the outside. Then we went underneath and the frame was all rusty. You ended up buying that one from me, which was a interesting choice. Yeah, and then someone bought it and did a frame swap on it. Yeah. And there's some rust going on there. It's not terrible. That's what's holding on the rocker panels, huh? Yeah, those are just like gussets that hold, they're like framework. Right, but here's the actual frame itself. It looks pretty good. Someone had put a coating or something on here. You can see it. Mm-hmm. So whoever did that was very smart. Yes, but then you can see, yeah, a little more. All the lines look good. Oh, fuel lines and brake lines, they can get really nasty in this one. Yeah. Okay. Tank looks good. I mean, if you told me this truck was from Kansas, I'd believe it. It's... Yeah, it's honestly yeah. not that bad. No. There is some de some laminating going on there. Oh, in the bed? Yeah. Yeah, just normal 20-year-old truck-looking stuff, but you can see some of the floor of the cab there. It looks actually really nice. I think you did good on this one. Yeah. You like the drive shaft? It's beefy. Typical mm. rust you would see on any truck this age, really. Right. The rear leaf springs nine inch rear end i believe on these yep that's a big one yep i don't think i have anything for you to fix wizard i don't think so we could do an oil change or something like that if you want i suppose might as well get it fresh <laughs> 10 14 23 even that's uh, pretty recent wow. so yeah whoever had it before you took care of it even the brakes look okay yeah i mean that doesn't look all rusty and crusty through there mm-hmm these pads are like 60% remaining. And it even looks like it has some fresh little bushings here because they're not the factory color. Oh. Well, I'm not sure. It may have been replaced at some point. Yeah. Well, how about that? How about that? Yeah. 126,000 miles, but clearly it was a much loved truck. The Magnaflow exhaust sounds great. Yeah, all the brakes are good. I bought a flawless hoopty. You did. You scored. It's been a while since that's happened. I don't even know what to do. Like, this isn't, this is weird. This is not good for YouTube. I, <laughs> I guess, but it's a weird situation <laughs> that when a good car is good, it's good. Uh, but when a bad car is bad, it's also good because then I can make videos complaining, oh my God, I got screwed. But <laughs> that's not the case here. This is the only part where I may end up doing something because the, uh, the bumper, which is a bolt-on part starting to road here on the bottom but you can only see it if you get down and look yeah, at it you can see it there bubbling yeah but really not that bad no, okay no. but if i'm gonna find a place to spend money i suppose it's there this is this is really odd it is very odd speaking of the lot is the same color as the ferrari as the lightning as the fiat it's like what, entire red line what a row here and what a dynamic set of cars that you have <laughs> with these two Jeez. These are 
<laughs> it's fixed. It's awesome. But it is very, very dirty. This 1994 456. Uh, I was able to drive it back from the car wizards and let the lightning up there. Uh, but it is very dirty. So we're going to head down to Van Gogh, get this thing a final wash. I actually have this car sold and money should be coming for it any day now. Uh, but I can't deliver it to him this way with all of this dust. And uh, Stuart has a car for me to pick up at Van Gogh anyway. So very excited to see the transformation there. Yeah, a lot of history with this 456, including it being a car trek car. But the 599 with the manual conversion, it does everything and so much more. But definitely needs a clean but. Stuart's here, finishing up the CL65. Yes. Holy moly, this does not look like a $19,000 car. <laughs> wow. Looks a little better, right? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. The wheels make it look a decade newer, so that was worth the few grand for that, sort of Chinese AMG knockoffs. Right. But, uh, yeah, these cars have aged just so well. And of course, of course you had to do it. Well, it's, it's been a while, so I had, you know, I don't know where this thing's been. <laughs> right. Yeah, these are just aged so, so well. It does not look like something that is getting close to 20 years old, this design. I know, the leather's in super good shape. It's yeah. It's a good find. Well, you brought it back. Thanks so much, you, Stuart. Uh, yeah, thank Another you. Another happy customer. Good. Liam, you like it? Yeah. Good. I guess a happy customer and a half. Yeah. And now he'll boogered all up back there. Well, it looks like you have two happy customers, Stuart. Good. Good. Thank you so much for watching. Four-year-old needs me.